Hi, I'm Kristen, and this is the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast where I talk about living a creative, intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, sometimes knitting, what I'm reading and watching, and a little bit about keeping a cozy, organized home. I've got my cup of tea in hand, so grab yours and let's settle in for a chat. This is episode 77. Welcome, welcome, friends. How are you doing? I am so glad to be home. I have been traveling for a week, which I'll talk about in a minute, but um, it is just, there's no place like home. Am I right? So let's talk about tea. I have felt like I have not done my due diligence recently with you guys on trying out some new teas. So I bought some Harney and Sons because they are my favorite quality tea brand. Um, and I bought some cherry blossom. Now I used to love this tea from coffee bean and tea leaf, which is kind of what I went looking for on Amazon. I never did see it. It could have been there. I got a little sidetracked by going, Oh, Harney and Sons has a cherry blossom, um, tea as well. And that's the one that I used to love from coffee bean and tea leaf. But so this is called cherry blossom and it is a delicate green tea with springtime cherries. So it's a green tea with just this light, flavor to it and um, man I am loving it I love green tea I find it just a little bit lighter and easier to drink all morning long <laughs> um, than just black tea and I got the tea 20 tea sachets um, which I love those I think you can might a lot of the Harney and Sun teas you can also just get in regular tea bags um, but I like these tea sachets because they are the full loose leaf tea in a larger tea bag so it's, I think it's higher quality and um, so anyways I'm loving that drinking it out of my beloved and chipped sadly anthropology mug <laughs> so grab something fun to drink and settle in or I don't know whatever you're doing just uh, let's enjoy this ride together because I have so much to talk about so like I said I just came back from a business trip um, I do marketing in the software industry in the manufacturing software industry so it's honestly it's like the least glamorous thing you could imagine <laughs> but um, a big part of my job years ago used to be um, doing manufacturing trade shows and you know the last you know couple of years they've been canceled so this one was rescheduled um, and it was in Massachusetts um, at if you got if you live on the in New England you might know that it was at the Big E um, which is where they have the big Eastern States Fair and um, I've done the show before but not for many years. And it's frankly the first show that I've really been responsible for setting up and running in like 20 plus years since I quit my job to, to raise my kids. So that was a little bit nerve wracking. Um, I flew into um, Hartford and then just drove north into Massachusetts. And um, it had it, just getting uh, packing for the show was a big thing. So one thing that I had really learned with trade shows um, from back when I used to wear heels is that you know, you're on your feet all the time. And I've got some foot issues here in my 50s. And so I spent so much time looking for um, like cute quality shoes with good arch supports, a little wider in the toe box, you know, all these kinds of things. And sadly didn't really find what I was looking for. But what I did find was, um, just in case this comes up for you, are some black flats, which I didn't, I wasn't gonna do flats because I wear I wear custom orthotics in my shoes and I've got this issue um, called an aroma, a, an aggravated nerve in my foot. So I've been living with a lot of foot pain for the last year. Recently got a couple cortisone shots that are giving me some temporary relief. But um, there is a shoe, it is not beautiful, but it's called, it's a Skechers Clio and it's a black flat that is a knit. It's, it's the, the actual shoe is kind of a knit thing and you can actually throw it in the wash, which is, you know, like if you're wearing flats, without socks they can get a little stinky so it's nice you know that you can do that it's got built-in arch support and um so it was not the cute high quality shoe that i was shopping for but since i couldn't find that it did me in a pinch and i have to say that i was on my feet for four days straight and my feet felt great so i was so relieved and i often get where it cuts into the back of my heel or I have kind of wide feet and so it just starts to ache around my toes where I'm kind of being pinched. None of this happened with the shoe. So for what it's worth, um, they did the job. I, I will not be like hopefully having to like, I can find something cuter to say wear to a wedding or a Christmas party, but for standing on my feet for eight hours a day, they did the deal. 
Um, so the show went fine. Um, getting there was a little dramatic. Um, my husband took me to the airport, LAX, and um, my flight got delayed about three times over, I don't know, four hours or so until they finally just canceled it. And I could not reschedule my flight till the next day. So he had to come back and get me. So he spent like over five hours in the car <laughs> driving me to and from the airport. But, um, you know, it, it is what it is. Let's just say that I was glad that I had knitting and I downloaded some shows onto my iPad and I brought my, um, my Silk and Sonder journal and I got kind of caught up on that. And so that it was, it was, uh, not a bad time at the airport, but, um, glad to get out and, and off to that show the next day. Then at the end, I had one kind of full day. My flight was not on Friday, was not um, till 5 p.m. And I wasn't sure how I was going to spend this um, day. I had left it um, empty in case there were some loose ends to tie up with shipping things back from the show. But we got everything done on Thursday night. So what I ended up doing, well, I had two choices. One, I could drive 30 minutes north to the Yankee Candle Factory, which I was kind of tempted to do. I'm not... A big Yankee Candle fan. They're very strongly scented, and I'm, I'm a little sensitive to that. Um, or the other thing I could do is drive, and but that was sort of away from the airport. I could drive towards into Hartford, and I this is what I did: is I went to the Mark Twain um, Museum and House, and um, I did a living history tour, which meant it was led by an actor who, I guess it depends on which one you book, um, who is going to lead it, but this was led by Susie Clements, which was um, Mark Twain's oldest daughter, and she was delightful, and the house was very cool, and and Harriet Beecher Stowe lived next door. Who knew? Um, but that was just a, a wonderful way to kill a couple of hours before I, I headed out to the airport, so just so, so happy to be back. I have to say that it was kind of fun. I stayed in a very nice hotel and um, was able to just sort of <laughs> indulge in all kinds of self-care things of um, painting my nails in the evening. I'll talk about that later. Um, working on some journaling um, in the hotel room, laying in bed. It was very fun. Um, and I wanted to tell you that I've got a really fun um, Silk and Sonder giveaway opportunity, a free month that I will talk about a little bit um, towards the end of the podcast when I when I talk about all that um, self care, productivity, homemaking kind of stuff. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much to Fat Quarter Shop for sponsoring the podcast. As you guys all know, I love the Fat Quarter Shop. They have the biggest online selection of quilt fabrics. They've got all the big names, all the new lines. And sometimes, maybe even more importantly, they have all the basics. When I need to load up on a bunch of background fabric, all my Motabella solids, things like that, I just go order those in bulk from Fat Quarter Shop. And they've got fast shipping. The packaging is beautiful. They just do such a great job. As a matter of fact, I love their customer support. I have actually sat on the phone with customer support as the woman helped me match a color in a line. <laughs> you know, like, I'm not sure which one do you think is right? And she would look at it and she looked online. I think she even pulled some off the shelf. Like, oh no, I think you want to go this direction. So helpful. So they've got absolutely the, the best customer support around. And it is time again for them to do their annual um, charity quilt. So every year they do this um, charity quilt and stitch along. And this year um, it is called, the, the quilt is called the Heartfelt Charity Quilt. And there's also a cross stitch, um, same thing at the same time. And both of those benefit the Make-A-Wish of Central and South Texas. And they grant the wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions to enrich them with hope, strength, and joy. So the way it works is they just encourage you to, they put up the patterns, they encourage you to, don to donate just $5 for the use of each free heartfelt pattern. And then Fat Quarter Shop and Moda together will match up to $30,000 of the donations. So definitely check out the, the donation page. I'll put all the links in the show notes. Um, the quilt is super cute. It's designed by Corey Yoder. And every, they've got, got large blocks and every block is a heart. And some of them are, you know, just hearts heart hearts and some of them are more like hearts that are embedded into a traditional quilt block kind of thing so it kind of mixes it up it's very very cute so definitely check it out and um, I will as usual put a link in the show notes 
Let's talk quilting. I am happy to report that I have, in fact, done some quilting. Um, I always uh, am a little embarrassed when I come back after a few weeks and I haven't done anything. So as I talked about on the last episode, um, 76, I am working on a quilt from Quilts for Scrap Lovers book by Judy Gauthier. And I chose the pattern Sunshine and Shadows. So what's cool about that book is that it very much explains to you, and there's a class that goes with it, but it just talks all about how to sort your scraps, um, and she sorts by color. She also builds every quilt on a few um, different sizes templates that you can buy on Amazon. And um, so it's just, it's a very handy book to have. I've reviewed it in the last podcast if you want to go check that out. So I chose Sunshine and Shadows, which is a little bit different. It's the cover quilt um, from that book if you want to just uh, peek at it. Um, it's a little different than some of the other ones. It is built on, it is, let's see, it's a four by four um, block, so, meaning there's four by four units, which are four inches actually. <laughs> and each unit is basically, it's just, it's a half square triangle with a, a, a color um, on one side. And then the other side is, um, I, think, I think Patty and I did a, a block like this for the handpiece quilts along. It's probably got a name. We called it a complex or compound half square triangle because the other side, which would be like your light, it has a, a square in the corner and two triangles that make up that other half square triangle. When you look at the block, you will, if you go to the show notes, you can see what I'm talking about. So um, she, her cutting instructions used her templates, which I don't have. I thought about getting and um, ultimately decided I could do without those, even though I do think they would be very handy. <laughs> I have to admit that. So um, she has them, you make this from those templates, um, which are just like a five, you know, like they're just squares. They're just squares of certain sizes that all play together really well. And she has you do them oversized and then trim them down to, so one of them is a four and a half inch little template. And so I followed those instructions for the first one and then realized that if I didn't have the template, it was a little hard to trim down because it is a more complicated half square triangle and you have to get the center perfect. So you know what I did? I just re-engineered the block. It's a very simple block. So I just went over to EQ. If you were mathy, I'm sure you could figure this out. I'm not mathy. I drew up the block in EQ and just got cutting instructions where you don't have to um, trim it down. Actually, I really like sewing oversized units and trimming them because sewing together perfect blocks is such a pleasurable experience, but that's not the way this worked out. So no problem. So, so I had my block down and the way this quilt works is you just make that block. How many times? I think there are t uh, 12, 12 of those. And then I have just plain um, squares in the corners. And each of these larger blocks is just built on scraps from um, a, a certain color. So I'm, I'm not technically doing it um, from my scrap bin, mostly because that scrap bin is kind of put away right now. I really would like to sort that out. That maybe will be a project soon. But I just went through my stash, which is, as I've mentioned, mostly fat quarters. So like some people think that's a <laughs> that could be a scrap. And... Um, I didn't have this color wheel at the time, and I'm so glad I have it now because I still have like 10 more blocks to make. And this is, I talked about it in the last podcast, it's called the Essential Color Wheel. And what's cool about this is that it breaks down so many colors between each main color. So between green and yellow, we've got spring green, yellow green, chartreuse, uh, between yellow and orange, orange, yellow, yellow, orange, and just so many different um you know, just designations between colors. And she shows you in her class actually how to sort your scraps using this. So she has you roughly sort scraps, like, you know, all your blues are together, just like, you know, if you held it in front of a five-year-old child, what color would they say it is? And, and, and you just throw it in that bin. But then when you're gonna make blocks, you can start slicing and dicing a little bit more specifically. So my blue, I made a blue block and a yellow block. And I, as, as I said, I had to do this on my own, but but what I came up with is basically something more in the aqua blue side. But she has you lay this on your table when you're sorting your scraps and just hold your fabric up to it. And it just helps you figure out, you know, like a blue that's that's leaning more green or a blue that's leaning more 
uh, purple or you know those kinds of things that give your block a more cohesive look so oh god I'm so loving this because I was struggling with my yellow mostly because I don't have a lot of yellow fabric so I was trying to get enough um, fabrics I actually had to repeat a couple which I'm not too happy about um, because I just didn't have enough yellow so my blocks are more in I'm holding it up a golden yellow um, thing and I, I just I had a few other ones that were more yeah see this one is a little more in the yellow yellow side um, and I had to reject some that were a little too bright yellow um, but this just really helps the the blocks be more cohesive so this particular quilt I believe has 12 blocks and I'm going to try to make each one um, a different color so I think I'm gonna you know get into some darker blues and some reds and pinks I have no purple in my stash, nor do I really have any orange, so uh, maybe some greens. So that's my plan with that. And it is very fun because it is just, once things are cut, it is just chain piecing heaven. They are easy blocks. Things are coming together uh, very well, even though, um, you know, there's no cutting to size or anything like that. So anyways, I am really um, enjoying this, this color wheel so much. The other project that I have been dragging my feet on is binding my Cabin Valley quilt. And I think I'm a little bit nervous about my decision to bind it in white. And part of that decision is that basically I would need to go buy binding fabric, which I don't want to do and I have plenty of the white left. Um, but I've decided, I talked about either binding it in white or doing a facing. Someone asked what a facing was all about. And I'm going to put a link in the show notes to Patty Dudick of Elm Street Quilts. She has a tutorial on facing, which is basically a binding that pulls it all to the back of the, um, the back of the quilt so it doesn't look like there's any binding it's very common on modern quilts and especially smaller ones um, but I think I'm just gonna do white and you know what I decided actually as I was making my show notes and admitting to myself you're dragging your feet because you're nervous about how that's going to look even though I have vowed to try some new things binding is so easy to rip off if you don't like it so what's the deal like I, I just need to do it so um, hopefully by the next podcast I will have made some progress there. Now, um, the other couple things I wanted to talk to you about that are quilting related is I got a new book um, called Adventures in Improv Quilts, Maj Master Color Design and Construction. And this is by the master improv quilter, Cindy Grisdella. I have talked about doing her um, improv class and her other book about improv quilts before. And I have done uh, many of the units that, sh that she talks about um, that are sort of the foundation of her quilts. And so she's got a new book out and it's and she also um, in this book uses this exact same um, color wheel, which is um, kind of fun. So this book, um, it really talks all about um, the foundation of improv quilting, choosing a color palette, the elements and principles of design. I'm, I'm telling you some of the chapter titles here. Um, the anatomy of improv, three ways to create improvisationally, um, adding um, quilting. There's a whole section on adding texture with quilting at the end. And um, it is it is absolutely fabulous. She goes through color theory and has all these beautiful, I'm, very, I'm a very visual learner. And so like right now I'm on a page about color palettes and she shows examples of a monochromatic, an analogous, a triadic, a complementary, um, color schemes on very um, similar styles of quilts of, of her uh, improv style quilts and I gotta tell you that I am such a fan of the monochromatic um, color palette this one is different shades of blue with a little bit of a purple in there it's so pretty that just like sort of that, that speaks to me and she talks about combining the palettes um, again with the elements of designs with with um, lines and, and curves, um, how to balance those um, using repetition and variety. Um, and then she has guided exercises. So if you read all this and you're like, okay, that, like me, that, that would be me. Like, I don't quite know what to do with all this information. Uh, give me some instructions. And so she has you do these um, different exercises about playing with color. And she just kind of very gently um, gives you ideas of things to do. Um, different ways of putting together curves and um, circles. And um, 
here's a it's called a, a blue puzzle of just like putting different kinds of improv blocks together to form a single quilt so anyway so that is improv quilts by cindy grisella I think this is going to be super fun and another great one for me to uh, dive into as I'm trying to get over myself <laughs> and experiment more with modern and improv um, quilts and just maybe break out of the pattern thing so much. The other fun thing is Fat Quarter Shop sent me um, the Lori Holt Be In My Bonnet um, 2022 planner. And oh my gosh, it is, it's exactly the same color as that, um, my quilt block that I made, which is that kind of aqua blue with a linen cover and the printing is embossed and silver. It's super pretty, very high quality, um, coil bound. And um, so this planner, it is a straight up, it's just a straight up planner. It's not even necessarily quilting related, although you could use it for that if you wanted. It's got uh, tabbed months. It's got the full month at the beginning and then, um, a place to do notes, your priorities, any goals, any health goals for that month, things like that. And then very simply just each day and some lines to put your to-do list or track whatever, whatever you want to track. I've been with my Silk and Sonder journal, um, using some of the sections in unconventional ways. So you could track your progress on a quilting project. You could track your to-do list. You could track a specific, health goals here and there is actually a water tracker at the bottom of each day so anyways it's a very simple i think very effective um planner and i'm going to give this away um, in the next couple of weeks so i will do it as an instagram giveaway um probably um at the beginning of november so just stay tuned for that because um, I, I really think that somebody's going to love that and I'm not doing it this one because I have another fun plan, another fun giveaway for you guys. So I've got to, to space them out. As a matter of fact, I have several giveaways that I think are going to take us through the end of 2021. And that is going to be super fun. Let's talk knitting. Um, I am still just working on my elementary wrap. Um, I will again put that link in the show notes. If you guys haven't started one, you should totally start one because they um, are a very um, relaxing a kind of a skill building knit because it's it's just it's stockinette it's flat and long and rectangular and I think it's making me a better knitter so you knit it's all knit stitches on one side 120 stitches you flip it it's all purl back except for just a few stitches to make a border on each side and I used to kind of dread purling and I'm not gonna say that I like purling as much as knitting but I'm definitely over um, really negative feelings about it. I'm still a little bit excited when I get to flip it over and just do the knit side. <laughs> I won't lie there. But I made so many, not so many, I made several mistakes in the first, you know, 12 inches of this thing. I, I don't know how much. It's probably, I'm, I'm probably coming up on three feet, maybe two and a half feet. Um, is, and this thing, it's, I don't know, it's taller than me. I think it, it's like going to be like seven feet long. It's going to be one of those really big wraps, big scarves, or you could put it around your shoulders or whatever. Um, but I made, a, I'm going to jinx myself here, but I made mistakes early on that I had to, I even had to tear back like eight inches. It was very painful. Um, but I have not had to, um, I haven't made any mistakes that I'm aware of anyways for, you know, uh, inches and inches and inches now. So I do think it's just that it's skill building. I mean, it's just knit and purl. If you are making one, please post your project in the Sample Handmade Everyday Facebook group. I want to see it. I want to see what other people are doing. I will try to remember to post mine as well. So that's kind of it for knitting. I have a sock, a second sock languishing. <laughs> where I'm just, I think I'm just headed down the foot at this point. So I'm like really in a good place with it, but I'm, I'm really enamored with um, knitting the shawl right now, the wrap. It was perfect airport knitting because it was not too big at this point. Although it could have been good to just, um, you know how you can be, you can warm yourself up when you're, you're binding a quilt by having it on your lap. You can do the same thing with a, a big wrap like that. But um, I've knitted it at the airport. I knitted it at my hotel room. Um, so it's always so fun to have those kind of projects like that. Let's move on to books. So I had, I did, I've read a few books. Um, 
and I'm sort of hesitant to tell you about one of them. I read Starting Now, which is by Debbie McComber. It's one of those Blossom Street series, which actually I have really enjoyed as a, as a light read, um, as a, a crafty fiction, as I like to call them. Um, I think the first one was called A Good Yarn, about a woman who um, opened a quilt shop um, on Blossom Street, which is this area, a fictional area in Seattle. And, um, and there are, I don't know, there's probably... Uh, 10 of these books in these series there's one about a, the flower shop owner there's one probably about the cafe <laughs> that's across the street um so just you know all these different um little businesses that and they all interact together so those are fun and i was just like kind of craving that um kind of comfort read and decided like has has debbie mccomber written any more of these since i last read one so I picked up starting now and it was just okay it was not the best one but i did finish it and it wasn't terrible so this one is about um a lawyer who gets laid off and, her, and this is a woman i think she's in her 30s and she's just you know she's on the partnership track she's just all about work 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 and she out of the blue gets laid off i think this is probably somewhere like during the recession, like maybe took place like 2008, 2009 kind of time. And she does not know what to do with herself. As a matter of fact, her her boss who lays her off says, you know, I think you should take this time to get a life for yourself. Find something to do besides work. Like get, get some more meaning. You know, I uh, missed, you know, my entire, my kid's childhood and now they're all out of the house and I really regret that. Don't let this happen to you. So she... Um, stumbles into a yarn store and she had kind of you know knew how her grandmother taught her to knit when she was a kid hadn't done it forever and starts knitting hats um, for preemies as just so she's not even knitting anything for herself just doing charity knitting to keep herself busy while she is searching for a job and um you know she meets uh as she's delivering these to the hospital she meets a, a cranky doctor of course we know where that's all gonna go <laughs> <laughs> hunky cranky doctor surgeon um and uh but the one thing that really came out of this book is um i don't want to give too much away but she becomes she starts starts volunteering at the hospital as a baby rocker so it's someone who works in the nursery and just you know sits there and rocks babies and i've heard of this volunteer before um usually for preemies because preemies really need that that touch because i do think that in general a lot of babies are staying in the rooms with the moms these days but i started like searching for that like i want to be a baby rocker <laughs> i have more time on my hands um and so i haven't gone anywhere with it it turns out that um around here you can just you know, be a hospital volunteer and you can do, um, you may be assigned one of many things. And I was actually a candy striper in high school. So I kind of know what it's like to, to do this, but of course they'd never let a 15 year old, um, rock babies probably, but I'm, I'm, I need to keep looking into this cause maybe, you know, maybe now, maybe, um, when I retire, I don't know, but I think that I would love to do that. As a matter of fact, I used to, before the pandemic, work in the church nursery for just that like exact reason, just to get my fill of, um, being around babies. Cause I do love that so much. So that was called starting now. It was okay, but it sent me on uh, the quest to be a baby rocker. <laughs> then I started, but did not finish, um, Birds of a Feather, which is by Jacqueline Winspear, and it is the second book in the Maisie Dobbs series. Now, years ago, I read the first in the Maisie Dobbs series, which I absolutely loved, and I'm not sure how I didn't just continue with it, um, but Maisie Dobbs takes place in like the, I think it starts in 1929, so it's in the 30s. She's this young, she's this maid that, um, young girl and her employer recognizes that she's smart and intuitive and she sends her to university and then she eventually um, becomes an investigator has kind of a mentor and i read that book when i remember so well sitting in the van reading this book while um 
my son was having like a 13th birthday party. He's now 21. <laughs> That's how long ago this was. We were at a paintball place and I didn't want to play paintball. So I sat in the van and read the book until they all came out and had pizza and cake or whatever. So really enjoyed that. And so um, when I was looking for something to read, I thought, oh, I'm going to con continue with this series. And I started reading it and I was enjoying it very much. But then a new book dropped on a Tuesday, which is State of Terror, which is the new Louise Penny book. And what's cool about this one, it's not an Inspector Gamache book. It is a book that she co-wrote with Hillary Rodham Clinton, and it's a thriller. It's not a murder mystery as such. And um, so I had pre-ordered that book, and then I went and did the thing that I do, um, is I got the deal on the Audible and so I could trade back and forth listening to it and reading it depending on what made sense at the time. And that's what I, that's the book that I devoured on while I was away on my trip, like during the, you know, the airplane ride and the night at night in the hotel room, stuff like that. And I really enjoyed that. So that the deal with that is that um, this book is about a secretary of state who um, is new to the position and then there uh, is a terrorist some terrorist actions um, in in other countries and she is trying to get to the bottom of it and it's not you know based on reality per se but what's cool about this is because hillary clinton has been secretary of state she knows what it's like to be in the room with an ayatollah with the president of Afghanistan, things like that, you know, so there's some some realism about the games that, that people play, the mind games, the negotiating, um, the reading between the lines. And so I found that really interesting. And of course, I just love the way Louise Penny writes. When I got to the end of the book, I read, um, you know, the there was a letter from Louise Penny and from Hillary Clinton describing this project. It was a pandemic project. They were already friends. They already knew each other. Um, but Louise Penny was really nervous about writing a thriller. She had never done that before. And then Hillary Clinton was really nervous about writing fiction since she'd only ever written nonfiction. But um, I think that the collaboration worked. It was a, I mean, it was one of those stories that I, I hated to put it down because I just, I wanted to know what was going to happen next. I was nervous about the state of the country and what was going to happen with all these terrorist actions, things like that. So I absolutely enjoyed State of Terror. No surprise because I do love my Louise Penny. Uh, on to shows. I don't have a lot to report. Um, my husband and I did just start the last season of Homeland. Um, we had watched Homeland years ago and I had heard that the final season had come out. I mean, I think it was a while ago, but we just got whatever it is that you need to watch that right now. Um, what is it? I think it's Showtime. And we got that because of uh, an Amazon thing. We got it for 99 cents a month for a couple months. So we actually went back and rewatched season seven because otherwise we would have had no idea what was going on. But we're into season eight now and I'm totally enjoying that. What's funny is I kept saying to him <laughs> last night we were watching like, because I had just read State of Terror, which I'm done with, but it involves, you know, it's all the same players. It's Afghanistan and Pakistan. And I'm like, I'm confusing these two, <laughs> these, this book and this show so much right now. But um, so that has been fun. We just finished Goliath, which I've talked about in the past. It's an Amazon Prime show. And it stars um, Billy Bob Thornton, who actually, I believe, produces and even directed some of the episodes. And I've watched all those, and this is also the last season for that. We're like finishing out shows left and right. And what is fun about that one is this last season had kind of a whole film noir theme. Some of the previous seasons got very weird and kind of hard to watch. Like I was always really glad <laughs> to get through that last episode. But this one was just really fun um, because of the way it was shot and there was nothing like really super weird or creepy about it. So um, uh, Goliath, and, and, and it's it's called Goliath as a reader point or a listener pointed out to me when I couldn't figure it out when I first started watching it. He's a lawyer who goes up against um, large corporations or the water district or, you know, just all kinds of like big things. He's the little guy. Um, he's a lawyer and very flawed. As a matter of fact, this one had a real rear window vibe to it, 
which um, I really enjoyed. And lastly, I wanted to point out a show that I just started watching yesterday on the advice of Beverly, who left a comment um, on last episode's show notes that she has started enjoying a show called Packed to the Rafters. It's on Amazon Prime. It's an Australian show. And it's about um, this couple that are just becoming empty nesters. Like, I think they get one day of (laughs) being empty nesters till all these different circumstances start happening that start bringing people back into their their home so their life is not in any way going the way they think it will and it is it's like a 45 minute show and it's kind of a drama but it's also quite funny so it kind of um scratches that itch that's it's like kind of like parenthood but a little less intense a little bit more funny and it stars this guy i don't i can't think of what his name is it might be eric peterson But I'm looking at him, I'm thinking, you don't look particularly familiar, but man, do I know your voice. And it is the, so he's the dad of this family, um, Mr. Rafter, (laughs) their last name is Rafter. And he is the main character from the show, 800 Words, which I've talked about in the past, which is uh, kind of one of my all-time favorite shows. That show is about a man who loses his wife. He takes his two teenage kids from Australia where they live to New Zealand where he has very fond memories of this place that they used to vacation and he wants to build a new life there. He has a very distinctive voice that I really like but these shows are about eight years apart so in Pack to the Rafters he's younger he's just got a little bit of gray and he's actually you know he's not fat but he's he's quite a bit heavier than he is so like he was and his hair's longer so he just was almost unrecognizable to me and in um 800 Words, which is a more recent show. He's completely gray. He's thinned down, shorter hair. And so I'm only a few episodes into that. And there's several seasons. And then apparently there's something called Back to the Rafters, where we come back years later. And it's probably 10 years later at that point. Um, so I've been enjoying that. And I'm looking forward to, to digging more into that show while I'm doing my knitting. All right, let's move on to the last segment, which I don't know what to call anymore. I just want to call it life. It's self-care, homemaking, productivity, all the things that round out our life. And the first thing I want to talk about is this um, awesome opportunity I have for you guys with the Silk and Sonder journals. Now, I talked about Silk and Sonder in the last, I've probably mentioned the last couple podcasts because I am enjoying them so much. They are a monthly journal. You sign up and they just send you a new one every month, which I really like because I have a history of starting things and not finishing. And so having a fresh start every month, I find really, um, really useful. So in the October one, which is the one I've been obviously working on recently, um, I'm enjoying, okay, they, they give you an opportunity at the beginning to have some reflections about the month before, set your intentions for that month. And I think that's pretty common. That's pretty consistent between them. But then they just have different um, journaling prompts um, and they all have a theme. I think September was joy and October is patience. And um, so I'm enjoying, um, I, I can tend to journal about the same thing over and over, like why I'm not losing weight or, you know, so this gets me thinking about other things. Like, so you've got some journaling prompts about patience there. And um, what's kind of cool is I have signed up uh, for some of these um, classes that they have, they are called Sonder Socials, where people share how they're using it. They kind of walk you through it real time in a Zoom call. And one of the most fun things are people repurposing areas of the journal that don't really work for them and using it in a different way. And I've enjoyed that. And I am doing that, um, I think, in the what might be the weekly to-do list section, I use as kind of a quick um, diary or quick... T- uh, a, a me- to, to put my memories in to just explain what happened so like last week when I was working this show you know I've just got all these fun little you know tidbits of the day um, and because I don't really need it as a to-do list so it's fun to kind of use that as a different different way um, there's also like a mood tracker and if you're not into tracking your mood somebody used it to track different kinds of movement um, gardening versus walking versus riding your bike things like that so there's just lots of different ways to use it Um, and there's an app that goes along with it with a lot of um, inspiration people post their pages and and that's inspiring because you can see how people use it 
differently. Don't they don't take maybe the prompts quite as literally or the way they use color, things like that. I'm flipping through mine as I'm talking to you right now and um, I'm a little sad my water bottle leaked in my backpack while I was traveling and so it's a little wobbly at the end. But I'm tr but see this is going to be okay because in a, a week I'm going to start the November one and I won't have to live with my little wambly pages. But I'm really trying to embrace the imperfect. Like, you know, I didn't journal every day. I don't, I kind of aspire to use colored pencils. I brought colored pencils with me, did not use them. I am a pencil on paper person, not even pen. I'm a pencil on paper person. And that is just what works for me. I, it, I don't need it as a hobby to to um, do, you know, every day in a different color and use stickers. And, it, and people do, and it looks really cool. I saw somebody who said that my September journal was a work of art by the end. And, you know, that is amazing. But for me... I'm using it to um, kind of the journaling aspect, the digging down to um, now the kids are out of the house. What do I want? What are the projects I want to accomplish? Um, what sorts of um, you know hobbies? How do I want to spend my time? How do I want to change what we're eating? That kind of stuff. It's a perfect way to um, work through that a month at a time and even digging down to setting up your week. They have a page to set up your week with your your three goals and the habits you want to, to um, dig in on. They have a meal planning section that I use as my cleaning schedule because I do my meal planning on a whiteboard. So um, so anyway, so this is, um, I've talked about it before, but I am just really enjoying it. And so here's the deal. Here's the exciting part is that Silk and Sonder has given me codes. I have 10 codes. So it's the first 10 people. Um, if you DM me, what I'll do is um, I will post, do a post on Instagram and with this, this giveaway. And if you DM me, I can give you a code that will give you one free month of a Silk and Sonder journal with a membership. So the deal is, is that you do have to buy a membership. Now, a membership can just be one month. So if you... Um, if you get the, the free month and another month, it's like getting it for half, getting two months for half price. Or that you can also do the quarterly, which I do. I really like knowing you're, I'm going to get them for three months. So I like the quarterly. And then there's an annual one as well. So it's, it's pretty risk-free because you can actually cancel if you want to. Um, I don't think you will <laughs> during that first month before your real membership starts is the way I understand it. And if I have that little detail wrong, I will put a correction in the show notes. But that's the way I understand it. So it's a free month with a membership. And again, a membership can be as little as just buying one month. So if you are interested in that, um, DM me on Instagram, which I'm just Kristen Esser, and I will give the first 10 people who do that a code. So that I think is really fun. And it's a perfect way to try, try this out to see if it's something that you will keep up with. And I'm really loving doing it at this time of year where we often get super busy and kind of lose track of what our goals are as we're going into the fourth quarter. And I really want to finish out this year strong. And so by just, you know, taking five minutes every day to, to dig in, do a little bit of journaling, um, create a gratitude list, um, make some notes about what, what was good about yesterday, some little memories. And this is going to be so fun to look back on, you know, um, in a few years. Um, I think this is just a perfect time of year to do it and not wait until January because there's nothing magical about January, right? Let's just, you know, I just, I'm kind of a firm believer of let's start these habits that we want to do. Let's just, if, even if you, you thought you were going to do them in January and you haven't, it's not too late. Let's finish the year out strong. So speaking of finishing the year out strong, I um, have reinstituted this concept by Gretchen Rubin called Power Hour. And that is setting aside an hour a week or however long, it, it can be less, and it has been for me, just an hour a week to knock out all those little nagging things that can be done anytime. So therefore you never get around to. And I, I had a few building up and it was starting to bother me. So a, a clock in my office, 
slash sewing room, the battery had, had just slowed down. And so it was just off by like 20 minutes and then it was getting slower. It was driving me crazy. And it's a big clock and kind of an awkward place to take down. So I was just really procrastinating in terms of just putting um, new batteries in that. So um, I had that. I have this drying rack. I, I hang out to dry a lot of my clothes, but we don't have a clothesline. I just have a, a drying rack from Costco. But it's been out there for a while and something had happened. I think we had some winds and it kind of just fell apart into a big heap. And it and I, so I couldn't really use it. So I was dragging things over chairs, you know, and I'm just like, I just need to spend five minutes putting this back together. So just little things like that. I, I know we all have them, right? So one day I'm just like, okay, here's the deal. And I wrote them all down and I just, you know, they literally each took five minutes or less. And it felt so good to not be bugged by that every time I walked outside or walked and, you know, tried was trying to work. And it's one of those things where I didn't even realize how often I looked at that clock. So it's such a relief to have that fixed. The, the one thing, I only have one thing that I'm going to do today. And that is um, kind of goes into my, my next segment here is I bought some, I think it's called pompous grass. So I'm trying to switch up my decor on a very minor level between the seasons. And, and I got this from um, the nester who um, wrote the, the Cozy Minimalist Way, or just, I think maybe it's just called The Cozy Minimalist. Love that book. Love, love her ideas. I, I'm not 100% in, in love with her actual style. Like I wouldn't pick some of the things she does, but she has taught me how to change up things for the seasons and how to mix textures. And that was an element in my interior design, my decor that was missing to have this is you know have fabric and and um, have something that's got texture maybe you know a little uh, fluffy or you know like knitted and then have you know, you've got maybe a glass vase but next to that you've got some driftwood or something that's you know like just mixing up the different textures in a room is very useful just like in quilting right and so um, what she teaches you is um, in that in that course and in her book welcome home um, is how to change up things in your home so from summer to fall i changed out some throw pillow covers i brought out i've got these white kind of fuzzy pillows which i usually wait until winter to bring out but i was just kind of craving some because it's really still kind of hot to have those but i brought them out anyways. So I've got these big like 22 inch pillows and I have some lighter um, ones with kind of a, a kind of a batik print that I have for spring and summer. And then um, I have plaid ones for fall and winter. And they're, they're still very neutral because I am a neutrals girl. So they're kind of grays and browns and beiges. And then I've got the kind of the fluffy off-white pillows. So that kind of changes it up on the couch. I bring out more quilts and hang them over um, you know, couch arms and things like that, where in the spring and summer, I kind of clear those surfaces and go a little bit more minimal. But one thing is I have different vases around the house. And this is the one thing that I, I like to change out. So in the spring and summer, I have greenery in there and sometimes it's real and a lot of times it's not, but I do try to get decent stuff like eucalyptus leaves, things like that. Um, the Joanna Gaines section in Target usually has some good stuff. That's where I got, I like the, the eucalyptus leaves. And then in the winter, I have um, a lot of like sticks and cattails and, and things like that that are, that doesn't sound pretty, but they are. But I never had anything for fall. So I got on Amazon and ordered some dried grasses. And I got this one, it was a package of, I think it's, one is more feathery and then one is I think called pompous grass, which, um, is, is a little bit different. Yeah, I'll put a link in the show notes, I guess. But um, what I didn't realize when I ordered it is that it was too short. It only fit in one of my vases. I have a lot of big vases because that's the other thing I learned from the nester is to, to go big. And so everything I bought was like 17 inch and it just felt bloop, right inside the vase. <laughs> Not fun at all. So I ordered um, some 24 inch and it's been sitting in a box from Amazon. Um, it came right before I went on my trip. So it's been sitting there for probably 10 days at this point. So today I'm going to bust that out. And what I learned, and it was really true when, with the littler stuff, is they said to put it in a vase and put it outside in the sun. And then it it blooms, it like puffs up because it's, it's really condensed down when they ship it. And that was so true. So um, I'm going to do that today. And that'll be 
probably all I do. Oh, the other thing that I also learned from the nesters on my kitchen table, I have um, just like a, an off-white a serving bowl, like a big pasta bowl. And in that I've got a butternut squash and an acorn squash and a few of those little pumpkins. And so I'm just using sort of seasonal produce to um, to reflect the, the fall decor. As a matter of fact, my husband was saying, so we're gonna eat the squash this week? I'm like, no, no, the squash is decor for like at least well into November and then we will eat it and they and they stay like I feel like I had one last year for like three months and then we just ate it at the end so um so I've been really enjoying um just playing around with those things and lastly it would not be self-care Sunday if I did not talk about nail polish (laughs) which I cannot believe who am I who am I that I'm into painting my nails I'll tell you what was really fun is I have never traveled with nail polish in my life before, but when I was going to the show, I knew that I was going to trash my nails during setup, which was 100% true. So I had uh, brought some just um, sheer neutral nail polish. And when you get the Olive and June Manny system, they give you a little Ziploc pouch and you can easily just put everything you need in there. And um, even if you wanted to, uh, I checked my bag, but everything small enough that if you did carry on it would still all work so the night before that I had to start the show I just sat there and watched a show and did my nails which was really fun and they stayed nice the whole show but what I wanted to talk about is they just released the winter collection and there's nine new colors and I am loving it I painted one of them on my thumbnail as I was preparing my show notes because I couldn't figure out I still cannot figure out um, what to call it but let me just tell you that there are um, three like shimmery um, colors, which I love during the holidays. There's a red one, kind of a purple one. And then this one that I cannot figure out what to call it because the only thing that I can say is that it's a little purpley brown, which sounds awful, but it's not. <laughs> it is called Sundance Shimmer. So um, I'm going to paint this on my nails today. Um, so those are the three sort of shimmery colors. And then there's this really pretty deep red called cozy that is going to be my go-to on my toes this summer and maybe not this summer, this winter, and maybe even fall. It's still a very, it's like a fall color too. Um, and then there's just some, you know, one called cable knit, which is totally me. It's a, um, pinky beigey, um, neutral, which is really nice. And then some ones I'm going to be honest with you that I'm not personally, ever going to use but I will give to my daughter in her stocking (laughs) a uh, a, this green this greeny blue it's actually very I would make a quilt in this color in a minute it's called into the trees Um, it's kind of a greeny blue it's kind of a pine and there's a one called velvet poof which is a purple and then one that is called um, caramel badino which basically just looks like um, a really good coffee with a lot of cream in it. So I'm um, totally, <laughs> totally going to enjoy mixing up some colors here. I'm getting a little braver with the colors. Um, I'm kind of a, a neutrals and a sheer girl usually because my nails are often short and they are right now because I broke some of them during setup, trade show setup, and so I trimmed them down. They're short. I'm still going to use this little purpley beigey shimmer one today and maybe this um this one of these red ones on my toes because i bought the petty kit and i love getting pedicures but um the last time i went i mean prices are up with a tip and everything they're at least 30 bucks where i go and then if you know if they're going to do the extra special heel treatment that's another seven i mean we're coming up on 40 bucks and so if if I can just do my own <laughs> twice, I'm I'm ahead in the game, and it comes with a lot of really cool stuff. Like it, the whole petty kit comes in this box that that is um, oblong, and when you put it together, um, it puts your foot up at an angle. There's actually two possible angles, so that it's easier for you to paint your own toenails, which is really cool. Like, do you remember? when you were a kid back when they had people who helped you in a shoe department and they would have these little stools with this little slanted area area for you to put your foot on and they would put your shoe on 
It's like that. It puts it up at a nice angle, which is is very nice. And it's got um, the special large straight edged clippers and all your you know cuticle stuff, you know cuticle um, remover and special buffers and emery boards, like everything you need to do. Oh, and a heel, one of those heel things that's um, kind of like a small cheese grater <laughs> to, to get those heel calluses. So anyways, um, I am not confident in my ability to give myself a really good pedicure, but you know what? I did pretty good. And I think that um, I'm just getting it better. I'm certainly better at doing my own nails because I've done them quite a few times. So I do recommend the Petty Kit and um, check out the Winter Collection. I'll put a link in the show notes over there. Um, and if you do decide that you want to get um, uh, a Manny set or a Petty set, then you can use the, the code SIMPLE20 and that will get you 20% off, which is exactly how I started um, and then got me a little bit addicted. Um, so I also did want to mention that we are coming into Christmas, right? We're coming into the holidays and everyone is saying supply chain issues, shop early, which I am really bad about. I'm trying to to get my head into that right now. So if you are, you've got people in your life or you want to buy things for yourself and then give them to your husband to give them to you later. Do you do that? I do that all the time. Um, the, the Silk and Sander journals and um, any of this, the fun Olive and June Manny or Petty set or just the nail polish, whatever. These are like just such perfect things that, um, that w- that'll be so fun for Christmas that you can spend some time over the holidays uh, kind of pampering yourself. So that is that. It's, n- it's not an episode these days if I don't talk about the nail polish. So um, lastly, no new reviews. Um, but if you do feel so inclined um, to pop over to Apple Podcast and leave me a rating and review, I completely, it's, I appreciate it. I love reading those. I love um, the little thing that we've got going that, you know, it's just, it's a little bit of a conversation, just like tea with a friend. And that's exactly the vibe that I'm going for. So um, that helps other people find the podcast and it really works because the, the podcast is definitely growing. So thank you so much for that. So that's it for this episode. You can find me online and my blog, Simple Handmade Every Day, which is where the show notes are, on Instagram at Kristen Esser. Keep an eye over there because that's where the Silk and Sonder giveaway and the giveaway for the planner will be. And please consider joining us over at the Simple Handmade Every Day Facebook group so that we can keep the conversation going. Have a wonderful week. <music>